Welcome to Make the Grade with the success doctor, Stephen Green, where you'll discover actionable strategies to help your student to reach their academic goals, to excel at standardized testing, and to plan for the college admissions process painlessly. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Green. Hey everyone, Steve Green here, the Make the Grade podcast, providing actions for you if you are a parent with a student or an entrepreneur. Why do we provide actions? Because we want to help you accelerate your journey to success. Sometimes I just pontificate on my own, spreading pearls of wisdom into the podcast nebulae that exist out there. But today... I got a special guest all the way from the wilds. And I got to love this name, Stevens Point, Wisconsin, named after me. No, maybe not named after one of my uh, one of my brethren, Stevens. She tells me it is a balmy 17 there today. So I'm glad she is inside. Meet uh, Tina Palmgren. Tina, how are you? I am wonderful, Stephen. Thank you for having me. I am. It's my pleasure and my honor to be able to host you today. Listen, let me tell the world a little bit about yourself. Sure. So, and this is just my heavy stuff here, Tina sent me. When she was 16 months old, she had open heart surgery, right? Yeah, 1968. Wow. 1968. And so a little, probably had some congenital thing. Um, yeah. But she's been able to live a normal life today, 29 years later. <laughs> um, thank you <laughs> she now realizes one of the best things her parents did was they did not treat her fragilely or or too tra fragile in treatment I don't know, grammar police can check me on that and they <laughs> let her do what she wanted without any restrictions and never made her think she was any different than a quote-unquote healthy child but she worked on herself to become a better person and realized it held back herself because she didn't want to be told she's lucky to be alive and so it comes from a mindset of abundance, happiness, and love. She now realizes God kept her alive to serve her ideal clients so they'd have more time, less stress to do more what they love, helping everyone to make a difference in the world. Strengthening the heartbeat of your business. I love that metaphor. Uh, the things you need to do because you're in business, like accounting, reporting, tracking, analyzing, relieving the stress of running your business. Sorry, I got to turn the page by customizing processes to make them quick and accurate and giving you confidence to delegate away. She's all about customization, appreciating that everybody's business is unique as well as your processes. And I got to tell you, being an entrepreneur for 26 years, yeah, I love 80% of what I do. I love to teach. I love to educate. I love to coach. I love to get to know people. I am a gregarious people person for the most part. I don't love some of the back office things. Exactly. Keeping, accounting, uh, even scheduling is a headache, but you gots to do what you gots to do, as somebody famous once said. So, <laughs> Tina, in gen just in summation, describe exactly what the name of your business, what you offer, and maybe who an ideal client would be so the audience can get to know you a little bit. Thank you, Stephen. Yes, um, Excelling Your Business is the name of my business, and I've had many people tell me I spelt it wrong because it's a play off of Microsoft Excel, so there's only one L in it, uh, oh. and it's really one of my main tools. It's not my only tool, but Excel is one of the most underutilized programs that just about all of us have. Um, mm. Over 90% of businesses use Microsoft Office, and it most people don't realize the power behind Excel and how you can automate it to do things for you. And that's what I love doing is making it do the things that you need to do to run your business, make them accurate, because there's no point in doing it if it's not accurate and efficient mm -hmm. and fun for you to do. So, you know, taking those processes that take three, four hours to do, you can typically be done in less than 10 minutes oh. and not have to do most of the work. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but not many people are going to use the words fun and MS, Microsoft Excel, necessarily in the same paragraph. Yeah, <laughs> I'm one alone of the sentence, few. right? I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's few. people that enjoy that. I mean, you're, like, you're probably an exception, but I think the average person looks at it as a, as a, a, a best necessary evil 
that they got to deal with in their business, right? I mean, look, exactly. It's, we're, yeah, in, Excel, we're in late. Go ahead, go ahead. No, Excel overwhelms so many people. They just see all these little grids and they're like, oh my God, what do I do with all this it's, stuff? It's and, grid, and I'm here to make it fun and easy for you and color code it and make it so it's it's pretty. Some people want pretty. Hmm. Um, I'm not the pretty person, but I can make it be <laughs> what you need. And um, it's functionality functionality is what it's really about. Do you know what most people don't realize in business and listen to this entrepreneurs. It's all about knowing what you think you can gain based on what you've already been able to accomplish. Right. Projections. So, so important in a business. Right. But how can you project into the future if you don't know what your past was? Exactly. That in terms of accounting, in terms of numbers, in terms of sales, in terms of anything, pipelines you know if you're tracking a pipeline you got so many calls and become so many appointments become so many presentations become so many sales and so much follow-up how can you project forward if you don't know what they are and these are all things and this is not a commercial for excel but it really is a fantastic program i mean it's it is what it is for a reason Mm -hmm. um automation that's probably an important word in your life right oh yeah i love that could be your middle name tina the automator like the terminator The automator. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> have you ever been called Hello? that? The automator? Hmm. Hmm. Might have to change it from the sassy I, efficiency expert. Oh, the, oh, we'd say that again. <laughs> the sassy efficiency expert. Yeah, I, I have a little sass and fun. I don't, if, if you don't want to have fun in your business, I'm not your girl. I want to make it fun and easy for you. And, and you know, it's, it's all about if you don't enjoy what you're doing, you're going to just dread it. And it just drains that life out of you. And it's no fun to do. So you now, do, keep I have a, do I have permission to occasionally call you the automator? Sure. I like I'm, And I might steal that from you too. I like it. Listen, uh, it is my gift to you to thank you for sharing some time with us. The automator, I like it, like the Terminator. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see the Terminator? I have. I have. Yeah. I mean, when you're 29 years old. I thought maybe you'd missed it. Oh, yeah. um, okay, so why, this is a loaded question, but anybody, listen, I don't care if you're a student in third grade or an entrepreneur of 50 years experience, listen to Tina's answer. Why is automation important? Well, it keeps it, um, it keeps it accurate. Okay. It is doing the work for you. It takes out the human error of God, I'm, I don't know. Sometimes I have fat fingers and can't type for the life of me. It does all that work for you. So there's always accuracy. It's efficient. I can take a process that takes four hours and have it done in less than 10 minutes. And, that, and um, time is money. T- exactly. And you're able to delegate you're, without worrying that they're going to screw it up because it's always done the exact same way. And what I love about automation and what I tell my clients is, is hey, if the power goes out, you can still do it your old way because it's doing the same things. It's just going to mm-hmm. take you those hours of time that it used to take. Yeah, what did they do in like 1500 with this stuff? I don't know. They sat there with their quills and. <laughs> oh my God. Um, yeah. And the old green bar. I actually just worked with a client that still did his accounting on green bar, bar paper. I'm like, I don't even know if I remember how to use it properly because I haven't done it since college. And even though it was only 10 years ago, because I'm 29, like you said, that's right, yeah, that's right. right? Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> lots of, the world evolves very, very quickly now. Exactly. And a lot of people probably don't some, even know what the green bar columned paper is. Let's not, let's not even go there. It won't yeah, be exactly. too painful it's for people scary. to remember it. And we got Excel now anyway. <laughs> exactly. um, reducing frustration, mm-hmm. saving time and money. I told, work with a lot of business people and I work with a lot of students and I can tell you, Everybody wants to make money if you're in business. Everybody wants to get good grades if you're in school. But in the end, trust me on this, if you haven't experienced already, time efficiency is huge. Mm-hmm. It's just huge. It, it, why exactly. would you want to spend 60 hours doing something that you could otherwise maybe do in 40 or 30? Mm-hmm. Right? It's just that much time you can do using almost anything else in your life, right? Exactly. Um, let's, can we talk about your personal history a little bit and maybe how it shaped you and to what you do now? Yeah, I'd love to. Okay. So um, you, you, you told me, I mean, at least through our, you know, kind of pre-discussion in your biography a little bit, um, you didn't want to be treated any differently, right? Exactly. You, you, were, you, and you were thankful to your parents for taking that approach. How do you think that has helped you get to the point you're at and maintain a successful service like you have? 
Well, I think it's the mindset of, um, I was always healthy. I, I was never treated as not healthy. So my mindset is I'm healthy. I've never, mm-hmm. I've not really ever had a whole lot of issues. I've had a couple things, but they're taken care of quickly and easily. Um, never struggled with um, the, the worry that, oh my gosh, something's wrong with my heart. And for me, it's mm-hmm. what I realized is I tr- I moved from Michigan to Minnesota and Wisconsin. So I worked in a lot of companies. And what I really realized I was super good at was finding errors and mm-hmm. not just finding and fixing the errors, but digging deeper to find out why they were happening. And what that did is gave me the ability to go out to the other departments because I, as an accountant, I have a little bit different philosophy of that I'm an expense to a company. If I'm really working in accounting for a company, I'm just an expense. We're just tallying numbers and doing whatever. But if I could go out to the other departments, like sales or production or marketing or wherever, and make them more efficient and productive, that's how I could help bring in more money to the company and make them accurate. Because that's what it was really coming all down to was I was fixing their errors where they were happening. So I didn't have to fix them on the back end. So it was really twofold for me. It was my way of helping the company make more money, but now I didn't have to fix the errors that were happening earlier. So it was semi altruistic and semi. <laughs> exactly. So, so you were born with whatever this thing was, and I assume that whatever the surgery was, maybe cured it. I don't know if that's the correct. Yes. Term. It was actually called tetralogy of Fallot, and it was, uh, um, the aortic muscle was growing closed and I had a hole in my lower septum. So they put in a piece of Teflon. So I, my comment is I have a nonstick heart, but they also um, like rotor rooted the aortic muscle and took about the, the growth that was happening. So it was wider. Yep. And so I was no longer turning blue and having seizures. I could not imagine wow. what that would have been like for my parents to see their baby as is that, having, I guess it was turning, lack of oxygen or something. Yep. Yep lack of oxygen. And, and so once they did that surgery, I've not had a problem. Well, good for you. I'm glad you're here with us today. Thank you. (laughs) So you grew up in the Midwest, Northern Midwest, North Central Midwest. And uh, as you went to college, you were in the career. At what point did did you get the itch, I guess, to go out on your own, become an entrepreneur, uh, cut the ties with the corporate, the corporate world? Well, I was actually let go from a job. Um, It was interesting. I was doing accounting and my boss was up in Canada. I was down here in Wisconsin and he decided to let me go um, because I was making changes down here and he didn't know how to um, do that up North at his plant. And Mm -hmm. I wouldn't tell him because he'd just take the credit. So I was just doing it. So he finally let me go, but kept me on for two weeks doing accounting and gave me a severance package. So it was, it was being fired, but not really being fired. I don't know. It was kind of weird. But I just decided at that point, I actually contacted our former HR person um, who was now at a, a local college. And I said, hey, I want to teach Excel. You know, I just don't want to do the month end anymore. And so I started teaching Excel. And I, I really just wanted to do something on my own. And I'm like, well, what if I help businesses, small businesses, be more productive at what they're doing? be more efficient and take that time away that they're wasting and getting frustrated over. And that's, I, I finally came up with the name and incorporated back in 2012. And here we are today. Okay. Let's, so you are in addition to an expert in Excel and automation and efficiency, you have an author. Yes. We are both authors, but let's talk about what you did. So you are a contributor and an international bestseller. I heard that somewhere. Talk yeah. about that. What's that about? What's, what did you contribute exactly? I ex, uh, My contribute to it, it was, um, the book is right there. It's Jumpstart oh, Your it. Blank, Jumpstart uh, your volume blank. three. I think okay. I, I physically can see the bit. book. Look at that. There it is. Yeah, there it is. Trying to keep the light off of it so you can actually That's read okay. it. I see. It looks good. But um, what I contributed is, so each chapter is jumpstart your blank. And so mine is your efficiency. And it's really all about making your business more efficient and productive. And uh, you can do some of that on your own. But a lot of it is through training with Excel. I just really realized that 
um, most people that I see that use Excel are not using it to its capabilities or how it really is meant to work nowadays. You know, I started using Excel when I was actually zero because if I'm only 29, um, <laughs> you know, back actually- For purposes used, of this podcast. Yeah, yes. Quattro Pro and I use Lotus for Quattro those Pro. of you remember that remember Quattro all those Pro. too. Yeah. Um, you know, that's what we started using, but because we used it in the way that it worked then as the newer versions like 2007, 2010, 2016 mm -hmm. came out, mm -hmm. we didn't learn the new nuances within it. And tables are flipping amazing. It's it's just so cool what you can do with a table that mm. people don't even realize it. Can you give and an example? Do, can you give pardon? an example that would like an, just a simple example of what a table might be used for? So it can be just if you're tracking your expenses. So um, you you know you put in your date, who it is, the category it's going to, and the amount. And so say you have three hundred lines, and you want to know how much. Um, your expenses are for travel. You okay. can click on a little button and type in travel and it'll condense and it'll give you the total for just travel, just like that. Okay. Or, you know, just you can sort things within the table very easily by multiple columns. You can do it other ways too, but within the table, what's nice is whatever, anytime you filter, it will give you the totals for just that filtered group, not the entire amount. Like if you don't make it in a table and you use some, it's always the total is always everything. But when you use a table in the total row, it's just the amount for what's showing on the page. So it makes summarization quick and easy. You can throw it into a pivot table really quick. And I know that's probably over most people's heads, but if you want to well, analyze the thing, your it data. It doesn't have to be because they have you to help them. Exactly. Yeah, and I can create that and teach you how to use it. it. You don't, you know, most of it, what I do is automated. So you push a button and it does it all for you and you're all set. You know, that's the fun part for me is watching when somebody takes a process that they did, like the microbrewer I worked with, it took him four hours to do his taxes every month. He's done in less than 10 minutes now. And the majority of the work that he used to do by hand, hand calculating all the totals is all automated. He pushes that button and it does it for All right, so I need you, here's what I need you to do. I need you to dispel the myth that this is so complicated that only experts can do it and that you can come in to an otherwise non-technical person. I don't like computers. Every time I touch a computer, I mess it up. So, okay, I need you to like have a calming influence here inside of people. Listen, let me, let me work with you. I will help you. I promise you that once we're done or once we get to a point, You'll be able to do this easily with no stress. It'd be just like sitting on a beach. Exactly. Can you go that far? With a cocktail. <laughs> with a cocktail. There you go. <laughs> yeah, with a with a with a margarita or whatever you like. There you go. But 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 real. But the thing is, the works in the setup, right? The use it is. is typically, um, you know, maybe uh, adapted every now and then. But the use is really more uh, just day to day. Exactly. Yeah, it's the setup that takes a little bit of time. And, and most people, you know, we have the great resignation that you're hearing about all the time now. You know, mm -hmm. we're most companies are strapped for employees. You don't have any time to try to even think of how to do something differently because you're so busy just getting things done. And, you know, and so if you have somebody like me come in and look at what you're doing, I can automate things so it can take some of that stress and all those tasks off your plate. You're still doing, you'll still end up doing it, but in way less time. Um, another example that I, I worked with um, a corporation that I was working at, they had 10 different spreadsheets for 10 different hospitals. And there was about 15 pages on each one and for all the cash receipts that came in through the day. And at the end of the day, somebody manually went through each of those tabs and copied transactions that were still open to the next days. And on a good day, if they made no errors, it took them 20 minutes per spreadsheet. That's 10 spreadsheets. It's over three hours. When they were, when I was done with what I created, they had each one done in less than two minutes. So saving, you know, from 10 to maybe 20 minutes max, if that, over three hours. You know, what could you do with that time? 
money, and, especially if you're an employer paying people 20, whatever, 30, $50 an hour. Exactly. It's obvious to me the benefits of this to a business. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you're one person or 5,000. Would the same benefits play, let's say, for a student or maybe even a household? Like if somebody wanted to just track expenses in their house, or maybe oh, yeah. QuickBooks or Quicken or one of these things, but is it just as applicable or just as valuable there? Oh, definitely. When I was teaching at the college level, one of the things I did was have my students create an inventory of what they owned. Because as a college kid, they don't have a whole lot. And the reason I did that was because during winter break, there was a fire at one of the um, uh, apartment buildings and a bunch of kids lost their everything, you know, lost their homes, lost whatever they had. But if you have renter's insurance or homeowner's insurance, that if you have a listing of what you owned and even better, if you have pictures that go Mm -hmm. with it, you know, you're going to get a lot more money back from your insurance company because you can say, this is what I had and have it documented, you know, so it's about documentation, even a address listing, you know, are you still doing your Christmas cards and handwriting all the addresses that takes forever and you get hand cramps, you know, we can quickly do a mail merge with, with um, Microsoft word and have labels printed very quickly, you know, in less than five minutes, instead of handwriting all those things. Um, there are many applications for at home. You can do your budget. You can, you know, have an important, I have an important um, date list. So um, what I love about this is at the top, it has the year. And as you change the year each year, it automatically calculates how old the person is or what anniversary year or different things. So, you know, you can stay on top of how old somebody is and at, you know, at different marks, like my 30th birthday next year, as we're talking, you know, somebody can celebrate that with me. There we go. Um, You know, you can mark those milestones with people. So it doesn't have to just be for heavy duty accounting issues. This can be much more broadly used. Um, You can even make a dice program with it and roll dice. Kind of funny. Yeah. You can, and and it'll show up the little dice, how, what was rolled. And so if it's a good kids program to learn because it's, it learned, teaches them a little bit about programming and it's kind of fun at the same time. So you have a program called from shoebox to toolbox. I do. Right? Tell us okay. about that. Well, it's for newer or entrepreneurs that still just have that shoe box full of receipts, which I've been showing you kind of something. Oh, I hope oh, a little bit bigger box. than Look this thing. You yes, know? There we go. Yeah. <laughs> for those of you, you who know? aren't seeing a video, yes, you just pulled out a shoe box full of receipts. Exactly. Beautiful, beautiful uh, case study there. Yes. Yeah. Which, so, which really you know, the implication is unorganized. They don't even know what's in there. They dump it on the desk account. Go figure this out for me. Right. Exactly. And how much is that costing you to have somebody else do it at 300? A lot more than being now. organized. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. Um, and the nice part is you can, somebody was, I was just talking to someone this morning that was saying they hand typed everything into QuickBooks. I'm like, and how long is that taking you? I'm like, do you realize we could go to your bank account and download your transactions and all you would have to fill in is the category it needs to go to? And she's like, really? That's all? Do you think people are resistant? Let me ask you this. Everything everything you're saying makes sense, right? Why Mm -hmm. wouldn't people want to save time? Why wouldn't people want to be more efficient? Do you think some people are just technophobic or... Some I think people, it has well, I've been doing do this for 22 years. Why am I going to change now? That's a little bit of it, but I think people are afraid to admit that they're not that organized. I mean, I, it took me a long mm. time to say, you know, I struggle with this myself because I know it'll only take me a few minutes at the end of the year to do it myself. So I don't do it typically, but I really need to start paying attention on a monthly basis to see where I really am. And they, there are a lot of people are afraid to, to share that they don't know that information. They're going to be found out they're a fraud or whatever, you know, whatever that hmm. feeling is for them that, oh, my goodness, I really shouldn't be doing this business because I don't know how to run a business. Um, we're going to wrap up soon, but yeah. you sent me a list of like 58 things here. I'm just going to read. I'm just going to title them. Okay. And I'm going to give you a chance to say which ones you think every business like highest priority. Okay. Cause mm-hmm. these are all things that you can help people with. Okay. Um, 
invoice management, expense tracking, timesheets, mileage logs, important dates. Uh, uh, what else we got here? Uh, I'll just stop there. Okay. okay. Those are things every business could use, right? Mm-hmm. Where would people start? What do you th- is there one that's most important or is it going to vary business to business? I think the expense tracking, in my opinion, is the most important because if you don't know what you're spending and where you're spending it, you know, you, you're, you could be costing yourself thousands of dollars. And if you're not categorizing it and getting it into your accountant in the correct way, you may be missing expenses at the end of the year that were for your business. And that's costing you more in taxes because now you're not able to write that off. And it's probably one of the most frustrating um, things because as soon as I show that shoebox, everybody's like, oh my God, I'm, mm, I'm looks there. like my desk. Yeah. <laughs> like and me. and it it's really, you know, it take so many people procrastinate on it because it takes so long and it is frustrating. We it's don't timely like this it. time of year. We're recording this in late February. Mm-hmm. which is not that far from April 15th, right? Exactly. And you don't, okay, true or false, it's a really good idea to wait till April 14th to talk to your accountant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, right. And That's the thing so is, even then, if you if you come, I, I've been using an accountant for years. When I when I get there and everything's nice and orderly and everything's in place, it, it's, it's seamless, right? They just bang, bang. But it, that everything breaks down. Oh, do you have that paper? Do you, do you have this form? Do you know how much you spent on this? When you can just, oh, hang on, let me pull it up. It makes it so much easier. So you have a couple packages you can offer people, right? Mm-hmm. Businesses. Um, you want to talk about them really quickly? Sure. It's from shoebox to toolbox. So one is a DIY. So if you're the person that wants to just learn it on your own, you mm-hmm. know, you get everything right up front and there are instructions and videos that walk you through how to do it. Um, that one's four ninety five, dollars And if you're a person that wants a guided tour, it's a month-long program that you get me an hour every week in a group mm-hmm. setting. And then you also get two personal hours um, to so we can really personalize like your invoice package. So it has your brand colors, your logo, all your information on there and really make sure it's all set up to work for you because it's all about that automation. And that's what I love to do. Got to ask you one question. I'm, I'm going to shift gears a little bit. Uh, Excel is what it is. It's, it's definitely the benchmark, right? Oh, exactly. But you've got all these other programs, Google Sheets, um, whatever. And the Google Suite is giant because it's kind of free and a lot of schools use it. So students are accustomed to it. Is there any, is, there, is, it, is it worth, are people fine in most cases just using more of a cloud-based app like Google Sheets, which if people don't know is basically Google's version of Excel at least to a degree, or is, is it good to go right up to the Cadillac, so to speak, get the real thing and, and just, just invest in it? Yeah, it, for me, if you really want to analyze your data and know where you're at, you want to use Microsoft Office Excel. Okay. Um, and the difference- In other is, words, the real deal. Yeah, the difference is being it's Google, I've worked in Google Sheets with clients and I, I struggle with them because they are not- um, it doesn't work as well. Like the tables don't have total rows and it doesn't work as efficiently as Excel does. And the macro, it doesn't like macros the way. How much does Excel cost plus or minus? You know, I don't even know what I pay per year for the program. Um, I mean, it's it's, not like thousands of dollars. No, not at all. I mean, and and it's a business write-off. So it's, it's, you know. It is entrepreneurs. Yeah, it is. It's it's a tax write-off. but it, it, you get the whole suite with it. And, and it's just, I have everything in Microsoft. I, I've tried Google and tried to sync them. And I, I'm just like, oh my God, this is just killing me. And so for me, I've just, I've, I've really have opted. I have some friends that work on Google Sheets. And if a company has it, I usually tell them to go to that person just because I'd, you, uh... I want to make it as efficient and 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 accurate for my clients as possible. And I know Google just doesn't do it. You want to stay in your lane, do it right. Do it right the first time. Exactly. Exactly. Because I've just found that it doesn't work as well in Google. Is there there anything you want to bring up that we did not get a chance to talk about? 
Mm. Because business wise, I mean, any just sagacious advice you want to give people, maybe you've learned along the way or, or something. Um, you know, I guess really just the back office processes are the heartbeat of your business. If you're not efficient and productive in there and knowing what's going on, mm -hmm. the only one you're really hurting is yourself. It's your business. And if you don't know where you're at, you know, you're losing, gonna, you're losing so much. It's uh, like a cavity. It's going to get you eventually. Yeah. It, and you can only ignore know, it so long. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I love that analogy. It's, it's going to get you, it's going to bite you, but you know, and it takes, I love taking that stress away because if you have a business, typically you don't open it up to run the accounting. You, you're, you want to do what you love. And, yes. and yeah, that's what I sure. do helps you have that time to do that, or maybe spend with your family, you know, not spend that late night strapped at the desk chained to it because, oh my God, yeah, I got to get this. This is for gasoline, $32. And this is this. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. What's your favorite part about your business? My favorite part is when a client gets how much time they're going to save when they're going to go, they just say, oh my God, this is such a lifesaver for me. You know, it, it's, and the ability to change lives. That's what it's really about for me, just making it efficient and productive for them so they can do what they, they love. I just love that when they see it, it's just so cool. It's their eyes just light up and, you know, it's just Can like, you work with, I mean, you probably could anyway, but is, do you have any limitation like geographically? Because now with Zoom, it's the same with me with tutoring and all and Colts Consulting. Can you work with people all over the country? I guess all over the world for that matter. Yes, definitely. I What's have the most exotic place you have a client? That I've worked. Um, like a Milwaukee? <laughs> oh, no, I mean, I've actually been out in Idaho and really? California. Okay. I've done stuff for clients out there. Okay. Um, I don't know. Pittsburgh, maybe. No, I haven't worked in Pittsburgh, but I have done stuff for stuff someone in Philly. Okay. Um, well, I can tell you, being from Philadelphia, it is quite an exotic city. It is. I was Paris, out there right before all, COVID. Very often in the same conversation. Yeah. Um. Right before COVID, I was in Philly. I loved it. Um, although I did have a scare, I dropped my phone and I was there by myself and down oh. by the Liberty Bell and realized, yes. oh my, I'm like, oh, how am I going to get back to the hotel? You know, it's like, I, don't, I can't call an Uber because I don't have my phone, but I oh, ran back true. to where I'd gotten out of the Uber and Somebody was just picking up my phone and I'm like, oh my God, you found my phone. And he handed it to me. Well, it was, was just nice. like, oh, <laughs> but yeah. yeah and I wasn't city even smart enough to love. hand the guy We, we are a bucks. very friendly city here. We, we, uh... <laughs> yeah, you are a friendly city. It was, it was, I enjoyed my time there. I ran up the steps where Rocky was. There you go. You, you, you did. Here's the list. Run up the steps, have a cheesesteak, go to the Liberty Bell. And oh, I think I missed the cheesesteak. I guess I oh, got to come steak. back. Oh, Darn. Cool. So, okay. Pretzels is a whole food discussion. Okay. <laughs> Listen, Tina, thank you very much. Um, we're going to try something here. Okay. So you, let, let's just, let's just do like a wrap up here. Tina has a business, excelling your business, spelled incorrectly on purpose to highlight exactly. her Excel skills. She is an author. She's also in Toastmasters, we didn't even get into, which is really a cool thing. If you want to do any kind of public speaking or communication, she basically is going to make your life easier. Uh, this is the Make the Great Podcast, Steve Green here, my guest, Tina Palmgren. And uh, we're about giving you actions. I'm here to help you with tools, with ideas, with actionable things that you can use to accelerate you on your path to success. Tina, you want to play everybody's favorite make the great podcast game it is called the fab five fave five okay right. this is I'm game Just take a deep breath okay i'm going to say something you tell me your favorite thing in that category so we'll start out with a really easy one color blue oh. Bleh. dessert lemon meringue pie you know what my last person said the same thing and they claimed they made their own Oh, crap. Not lemon meringue. I lied. It's banana cream. Sorry. All right. All right. Cross <laughs> it out. Banana cream. I don't even know what I like. I'm not a big sweet eater. All right. Well, how about food? Favorite food? If you get any meal you want, it's, it's your last meal, right? What are you going to have? T-bone steak with mushrooms. You're going old school. Medium Classic. rare. Medium rare. <laughs> not I'm writing this down. Just no, in case no she's going to take you to like Ruth Chris Steakhouse or something. Ooh, I love that. With uh, champignon. That's how you say mushrooms in French, by the okay. way. Yeah. 
I'm a Swedish yeah. girl. I don't know. Sweet. Okay. Well, Swedish meatballs. All right. Uh, music. What kind of music do you like? I like a variety. Um, I love jazz and, and yes. rock and country and you got one favorite, uh, rap, like uh, but... one favorite artist you want to honor here? Um, it's hard to get one. No, anyway. it's too. There's too many to pick. Okay. I don't know. I favorite guess place? here they I'll date on, myself. Uh, Ario Speedwagon is one of my favorite. Ario favorites. Speedwagon or Meatloaf. I don't know. It's tough. Meatloaf. R.I.P. R.I.P. Yes, Meatloaf. exactly. That was very sad. All right, there you go. That is uh, for those of you who's like 80s, late 70s stuff here. Exactly. Meatloaf. Yeah. Paradise by the Dashboard. Like, I like two out of three ain't bad. That's my favorite meatloaf. That's song. a good one too. I do carry like, Alexa, do play meatloaf. And I was, you know, I was like, okay. <laughs> favorite place to vacation. Oh, it changes. I love visiting new places and learning all the time. So probably one of my favorites so far has been. Hmm, can't you know we went up to Canada to the North Woods if you want to be where there's absolutely nothing go on a, a fishing trip down river six hours by boat you never see another person there's no electricity you camp out and it was just um these are one of the things they have like lodges in the middle of lakes and stuff oh they do but we didn't have no lodge we just stayed in the wilderness in a tent um, but the stars are just so amazing especially if people are from a city and have never seen stars i mean it's just like you can reach out and just I mean, we can see them here but they're not yeah right. but no you don't see stars <laughs> i mean it, it it looks like there's a few out there i mean when you're there it's just the sky hmm. is just oh, it's just breathtaking I, I mean, I'm, I mean, that's a little side gig i happen to know tina sometimes bartends i do so what's your favorite beverage my favorite beverage is a brandy old fashioned sweet, which you probably don't even know what that is out there. An old fashioned, usually you make it with whiskey. Yeah, in it's your got like area. Orange yeah. juice. I think it's like orange Wis juice. Wisconsin oh, no, it's like, and it's Upper like Michigan. Bitters. It's like those are bitter things, right? Brandy. Yep. And bitters. Yep. Thanks. You know how I know that? Because my grandmother drank them. Oh, and you muddle the bright, you muddle the cherries yeah, and yeah, oranges. You, take, you with like some push sugar it in the bottom of the glass yep. and you put the bitters in and then. I think orange juice, maybe. Yeah, we didn't do any orange juice. We put an orange. A simple. In. What do they call this? Sugar syrup. Um, oh, simple just simple syrup. sugar. It's just sugar and Dang. sugar and water. But a we just use sugar. And, yeah. So you're not like uh, you're not like drinking this uh, seltzer, uh, alcoholic seltzer things or something. We're I do school. drink some seltzers. I, there's okay. a one called Crook and Marker that I really like. It's it's not bubbly like the rest and it's not as strong it's only four percent instead of five and a half percent and so that means you can have more <laughs> true and it's gluten-free the one i drink so gluten-free um, yeah is and organic in, is there gluten in, in a seltzer i have no oh, idea no, i know it's <laughs> bread all right bucket list drink the thing. what is on your bucket list right now that you you really want to get to well, one is a trip to Italy that we've been putting off for th two years now. Um, it's supposed yeah. to be the spring, but I think it's going to get pushed I gotta back. Tell you, listen, the same person that said lemon meringue pie, they want to go to Italy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. I'm serious. Yeah, I might Christina have to connect with that person. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. see the two of you can travel together. Exactly. Italy. And Molto yeah. bene. Where do you want to go? What's your what city? Um, we're going to yeah, be up in Tuscany, Florence. so Tuscany, I'm going for Florence. a retreat. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we'll be up in Tuscany. Florence, um, beautiful. Yeah, I think Volte they're all... Bella, uh, Siena, really, really nice. Don't get quite as much press, but they're beautiful there as well. Yeah, what and I would it's... really like to do, though, is my dad and four of his brothers served during World War II, and I would like to do some of the European tour of, and just, mm -hmm. I'm, I love the history of World War II. It, it, and what I really like right now is that more of the women's stories are coming out about World War II and what the women actually did during World War II. There was a rebellion, um, a French rebellion leader that was a woman. Um, she was the most wanted by the Gestapo. Um, and really? She was called the White Mouse and just amazing huh. lady. She was actually from Australia, I believe. And just, she led over 5,000 of the men. Wow. During, yeah. And it was never really, you know, it wasn't really publicized back then, but 
there's a there's a couple documentaries out on her and it's just a really cool thing if you want to check it out let me say you say mouse in french i don't know all right here's the last one promise okay and it's a loaded question Uh oh what is your favorite podcast gotta be make the green there (laughs) oh did i get it right i got one i think you did let's see (laughs) yay You got it right. Awesome. Tough question. A lot of people, you know, they're not sure. Listen, Tina, I want to really want to appreciate you coming on. I know, uh, I know you're a very busy person, although you are very efficient. Can't automate a podcast that much yet. We're working on it. Um, if people, let's close out with this. How could people reach you if they want to get a hold of you? You'll also be in the show notes, but what's the best way to get a hold of you if they would like to discuss anything you offer or engage with you or do whatever? Um, they can reach out to me from my website. It's um, excelling your business with one L E X C E L I N G your mm-hmm. business.com. And there's a contact form right in there. Gotcha. Okay. I want to thank you again. This is Steve Green. This is the Make the Grade podcast. As I have mentioned, we are here to give you entrepreneurs, students, parents, actions that you can use to accelerate your path to success. Today, it's about automation. It's about efficiency. It's about tools. These are things, trust me, because I work with a lot of people, they put them off until it's too late. Then they got a big problem that if they had done it earlier, Tina's nodding her head, and feel free to (laughs) chime in. Um, If they had just done all along the way, it would have been a little tiny bit painful. But by the time you got done, it's easy. Instead, you got a big migraine that you got to deal with, and it becomes a hassle, and it gets in the way of other things. When you got a deadline, you got to do stuff you don't like with a deadline. It's double bad. Mm-hmm. It is. So this is stuff. Get it set up right, especially if you're a new, a newer, a younger entrepreneur who's just getting going. Get good habits with this. Get good processes. Get good automation. Learn to excel your business. I love it. All right, Thank Tina. You, thanks Stephen. again. I will see you next time, everybody. If you liked what you heard today, please share. The best way anybody can thank me is by taking this information, telling other people about it. I really believe the more people that hear this stuff, if it helps one person, it's great. That's all we need. We're just trying to make everybody's life easier, more efficient, and simpler. So thanks again, and we will see you next time. You've been listening to Make the Grade with the success doctor, Stephen Green. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe. For more resources and support, please visit makethegrade.net.